All right, here we are, VMFA Dance After Work in a little bit of a different format. This is an experiment on our Fridays After Five presented by Chase programming. Um, we had to make some different arrangements, but at the last hour, I'm so delighted that my dear friend, my, my family and my heart, Miss Ingrid, is able to join <laughs> me tonight. Thank you for being on the program, Ingrid. Absolutely. Anything for you, Robert. <laughs> oh, well, I'll take the compliment. <laughs> Into the discussion, would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself to the audience in your own words? Yes, my name is Ingrid Pettis. I'm originally from New York, New York City. Grew up in Philadelphia. And I didn't really start my training until I was a 15-year-old. And I auditioned for the Magnet Creative Performing Arts High School with no training. My parents couldn't afford dance lessons for me. So then I, I, I learned movement from watching Singing in the Rain, um, the Cleopatra movie, the whole African thing there. I was like, I, I was so enthralled with all that. I said to myself, I want to do that. And so I just went over there and I auditioned. I had a friend show me uh, first through the fifth position of ballet, uh, taught me plie, tendu, and that was it. And that's all I knew. And I went to the audition and I got it. Now, so got it. now you had this inspiration to begin dancing from watching these films. Yes. Um, where'd the rhythm come from? I mean, it seems, I mean, I know from talking to you, you just picked it up, but that start, that spark came from somewhere. It did. Um, it, I found that dancing was my home away from home. I, I'm going to get personal here for a minute, but I incurred some abuse in my younger, my younger years. So I needed an outlet. I needed, to, I needed to get away from that. And watching those films put me in a whole other world that I loved and that I, for, for a few hours, I could forget. Yes. And that's where my, my spirit came in for, for the dance. I, I, believe, I believe I had the innate ability for it. I always had that rhythm. But I didn't know if I could learn how to do exactly what I was seeing on, on TV. Yes. You know, you know I'm, I'm new to this style of, of work that I'm doing now. This mm -hmm. is the first interview I've had. I'm like, oh, I might, I'm going to have to hold back a little teardrop. I love you so much. <laughs> um, so you've got this spark. You, you know, you needed, you needed some place to, to live out or, or leave. Yes whatever's going on in your mind and in your life and you land on dance you know we say in the performing arts world if you can't speak it you sing it and if you can't sing it you dance it you dance it you move <laughs> you gotta move you gotta work it out uh and i know that very well because you are my teacher no. and i have enjoyed our lessons together teaching me uh ballet and fossey style um what if you don't mind can we take a moment to talk about what is um, significant about Bob Fosse and his contribution to the world of dance. Bob Fosse contributed a, a magnificent style for the musical theater genre. Um, his style is very difficult. It's not easy to do. Um, even though he grew up, he grew up, and you know he didn't have turnout, little things like that. He didn't. Have, so he developed this awkward style of movement that. You know, he mastered this, he could physically do it to his body, but trying to get everybody else to do it was a whole other issue. But after a while, it, it, it's a magnificent style for, for the musical theater, for a lot of the musicals that he created, that he choreographed. Um, I love, I particularly love the style because of its awkwardness. I, I love it because of that. It works very well for me because I came <laughs> to the world of dance late. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how the Fosse style differs from the traditional style of dance. You talked about how Fosse doesn't have turnout, right. but our audience probably doesn't know what that means. The turnout comes from the, everybody knows the classical the, the classical ballet aspect of movement. It has its it has its strict positions. It has its you know its turnout. Uh, it has it's very pulled up straight back lifted kind of style as far as jazz is concerned as far as modern is concerned we can let go of those little boundaries right there so and as far as uh, Fosse is concerned I, I believe that he basically 
pioneered a style that was really totally against the classical way of movement, sort of like Isadora Duncan. Oh, in my see, tell me a little bit about Isadora. Yeah, Isadora is, is, is the birth mother of modern dance. I truly believe that. Even though she comes from a background of the classical movement, but she, you know, she didn't like being totally rigid and held up and that kind of thing. She wanted to be so free with her body. She wanted to be free in her environment. And she decided to take, kick the shoes off and run barefoot and go for it. <laughs> that is beautiful when you, you can find a way to, to use your art the best way you know how, but then take it someplace where it makes a contribution to that art's evolution. I think Absolutely. that's So let's get back to you though, Ingrid. You, you, know, you audition 15 years old and you begin to dance. Uh, you learn a few positions uh, and, you, and you go from there. As you begin to study, uh, tell me about some of the more um, memorable experiences in your journey learning the craft. Learning the craft, I have I had some some excellent teachers in my in my day. Now, as far as the professors at the high school, uh, that that was a totally different story. But as far as the the people they would bring, the guest artists they would bring into the school, I was able to uh, work with Alvin Ailey. Um, I auditioned for a little part for a TV program at sixteen, wow. and I got it. It was wow. I was one of a, of two people that got it. So that was my first real experience of, of being in a company for like an hour of my <laughs> life. And I loved Alvin Ailey. Um, that, was, that was a really neat experience. I, I, Sandman Sims, the tap, the tap uh, dancer, he came yeah. in. I met some, I, I really met some incredible cultural people at the high school. What sorts, of, what I, what sorts of things did you learn from these people? I learned the, his, the historical value of why we move the way we move as brown and black people. Right. Of being Latina background, um, we all have that innate ability of rhythm in some form or another. And to take class, to take, it wasn't just a tap class, it was a huffer class. So he just walked in and he just started, started making sounds with his feet. He didn't call it any kind of names or any, even though he knew the shuffle, like shuffle step, shuffle hop step, whatever, he knew the names. But the way he taught the class was like, okay, listen to this. And then you had to do it. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. And half the students in the school couldn't even handle that <laughs> to a certain extent because you had to have rhythm, you know? But yeah, it, it, I mean, I learned a lot of things like that. A lot of it does have to come natural, I think. Maybe a, a part of it has to come natural. Part of it. Mm -hmm. All art, but certainly with dance. Uh, um, I've been, we've been going through the world of ballroom dance with this program mostly. And so we, we're no longer talking about ballroom right now, although audience, we're going to get back to our ballroom. <laughs> Got more things to give you. Um, so those are some great examples of the education behind dance. And after you learn, you become a professional, a professional who enjoys a storied and in some ways historic beginning and career. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last bit. What are some of the, the highlights of the career? My highlights of the career, I have several. Um, I auditioned for um, a musical, Cabaret. Cabaret is one of my fame, favorite, favorite musicals of all time. I've always wanted to be Sally Bowles. Because <laughs> she's the only one that, did, that didn't need to play an instrument. <laughs> yeah. So I auditioned for, at the City Line Dinner Theater. And I was in the run for Sally Bowles. But I had, and I was at a crossroads because I had to choose at that point: is is my college education more important right. than being on in a show, having getting a uh, Screen Actor Guild's card, having? You <laughs> All right, audience, it looks a little different. We had a technical difficulty, but that's the that's the year we're in, Ingrid. Uh, we were talking, we've already ta learned about uh, your path as a student. We've learned much about who you are as a dancer and as a person. 
I'd love to learn more about the very impressive, in some ways historic and storied career that you've enjoyed. Can you share some highlights? Yes, I have been teaching since I was 15, to be uh, honest with you. I've always had the, I, I believe maybe the leadership quality to be able to run a class and also substitute for my professors when they weren't at school. Um, that started at 15. I co-directed shows even at 15, 16, and then so on. So, and then I end up going to VCU and I pioneered the program there. So I'm, I'm the first graduate of the dance and choreography degree from VCU. And I also pioneered the high school and the first graduate of the high school as well. So my life has been a life of uh, pioneering and trailblazing, especially for the Latinas or Latinos that want to be involved because uh, there were very, very few of us. At the high school, I was one of three. Wow. At VCU, I was the only one. I, I, go to, I go to Ohio State after that, and I was the only one out of 135 students in the dance program there. What were those experiences like? They, they were enlightening. They were frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, when you have other students that are, that are not like me, you know, screaming uh, or just yelling at you saying, this is reverse discrimination. Why is it that you get all the attention? Um, in the dance program because of what you are. They didn't quite understand what was happening, what was going on. Um, so th that, that, will, that has been actually one of the main highlights of, of, of my life. And I, I like to think that I helped to um, pave the way for other Latinos who really wanted to do this kind of work. Certainly, yeah. I mean, you, you're... You're recently nominated for a Lifetime Achievement Award. Very much deserved. I hope I don't embarrass you by saying that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I mean, I was so shocked to hear about it at first. I was like, what? I didn't even know what was going on. But yeah, I'm very humbled and blessed by that. Yes. I'm delighted. I'm not shocked at all. You are very <laughs> deserving. Um, I, I want to talk about what you're doing now as a dancer. I mean, we, we could get into many different things. And I really want to talk a little bit about well, maybe we'll get there, maybe we won't, but mm -hmm. um, tell me about how you're using dance and art and, uh, and your experiences, both beautiful and painful, in your life today. I use, I, or if anything, I've had a dance studio in Chesterfield County, and um, I had one for a long time. And if anything, I've always been inclusive with whomever walked in through my doors. I it didn't matter what color, what gender, what sexual orientation they were. Um, it, that didn't matter to me. I was always, always all accepting. And even for those students who I, I knew that would never be part of a team because they were never quite good enough, they were included as well in my competition group as well. So, my job was to, you know, I, my, the choreography, I learned how to really choreograph for all types of levels in one dance. And a lot of teachers actually do it so that they have the same level, you know, you know they have the same kind of student. I didn't do that. I was all over the place as far as my kids were concerned. And I loved the challenge of that. Um, but now I, um, work with the intellectually disabled community, recently opened up a day support program, and I'm instilling the arts there. This is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, some of them are very talented people on the autistic spectrum, and I have one of my people, he can listen to a song and play it on the piano by ear. Wow. He's amazing. Wow. I have another client who loves to write gospel music lyrics and the things that she's coming up with is just incredible as well and so we dance and we sing and we play the we have I have congas there and I have a piano in there and we are just having a good time and they love the arts as well how did you decide to use the to 
to, to marry your love of the arts and your studies on this therapeutic uh, world. How did you decide to marry them together? With having the studio as long as I had, I was always mediating between parents and children and my kids. And I said, what would the next step to be would be a clinical, a mental health clinical counselor. So I, I received, I, I went ahead and got my degree from South University um last year gra i graduated last june Congratulations. And I received, thank you and i and i received it in mental clinical health counseling and i needed the tools because when i was teaching especially the teenagers um they were coming they were they wanted to talk to me about certain things i didn't know what to how to handle those certain deep issues that i was dealing with in this day and time so and i really wanted to learn about all that and now, and I, as I was going to South University, I was teaching for a studio in Williamsburg. And um, her kids were wonderful kids there. They reminded me of the, of the kids that I had, that I, that I influenced and everything. But um, that right there, I said to myself, you know what, I think I want to go into this next realm here of the intellectually disabled. I do have group homes, two group homes. So I've been involved in this uh, in, in this um, this world now since 2005, and um, but I really wanted to take have take the opportunity to teach them and show them and you know expose them to the world that's out there. What has that impact been like on on your patients on your clients? They actually they're learning so much more then I thought that they were capable of learning. Something about the arts opens up the mind. It really starts to connect all the hemispheres, all, all the, you know, the, the parts of the brain. It really connects with them, um, especially in the frontal lobe area. Um, the gray matter where a lot of Alzheimer's and dementia patients, the arts tend to grow more gray matter. And I believe that's what's happening with them now. So they're starting to pick up things I never thought they would be able to. How, I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry to, to have interrupted you. Uh, I'm, as you're talking, I'm remembering my experiences as a teacher. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering your method. How are you teaching these, these things that can be for, that would be for me very difficult to teach because I, I'd want to talk about theory or I'd want to talk about a specific technique and uh, how much of that do you are you are you getting into i'm getting into the technical aspect somewhat but the way i introduce it to them is i put on some music it could be any type of a, a, a classical piece it could be meditative type music um it could be latin based music i just want them to feel the beat listen to the music so i have them i have them lie on the ground and they just close their eyes and they listen to the music first and then we start to stand up and then we start to move around in it and that's all that we're doing at this point in time right now now i've been doing it and i've, I've had the day support now for two months now i'm able to teach them a ballet lesson okay wow so wow. they can stand there in first position oh. and hold their, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that what, what they're capable of. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is magnificent. I mean, you talked about you, you play a song and have them feel the rhythm. And that's, that's the basic for everybody. You know, that's, that's what we all do. That's how we begin to learn. And that's just how we exist naturally. You know, right. we, we got to know each other. Well, I knew Kayla first. We worked together. And, uh, and I, we met each other a few times there when we worked at Starbucks. And by coincidence only that I'm aware, <laughs> mm -hmm. here you came to Jesus Christ Superstar Rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll forever, forever love that experience. And that, you heard me sing and took me off the stage and taught me how to move my body. And I'm thankful. Yes. So grateful. Uh, coming up, um, we've been talking about the Bojangles program, um, mm -hmm. things in the future, and I'm very excited about that because that's the number we were working on. And, that's uh, right. <laughs> I first piece of choreographed music 
for me to ever have worked on. And I'm so glad that you shared with me that little clip you found from our rehearsals years ago. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm older now, but I'm in better shape. So I'm looking forward to getting Good. back. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Before we go, how's Kayla? Kayla is wonderful. She's, um, she's out here. She's actually working with me at the day support and they love her. Um, she has this, she has this aura about her, this, you know, this, this, she, she, when she was teaching at my studio, she was awesome then. She was great then, but she's doing really, really well. Yeah. And she, I had, I made her put on her point shoes the other day because we were talking about Maria Talti. Oh, wow. And she was a classical ballet dancer, the first ever American. You were and telling she, me, you were telling mm -hmm. me about her last night. Uh, uh, yeah, share some more about her with the audience. Maria Tallchief is, is the first American ballet, classical ballet dancer to be involved in the Ballet Russe. And she met George Balanchine, I believe they were in France at the time and comes home she she marries him and comes back stateside here to america and they 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 start new york city ballet but she's the first native american to ever you know to ever do the ballet dancing and she was beautiful beautiful mover just full and, and the firebird ballet that um balanchine he he set on her Wow. Yeah. So the Firebird Suite is it's a beautiful ballet too. Her version of it is just gorgeous. So I made Caleb put on her point shoes to show to show my 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 clients. Look, this is what point is like. This is what Maria Tall Chief is doing, and she's on her toes like this, and I show them the shoes. It was a wonderful experience for them. Oh, I I would love to give to be able to show the audience some examples of this dancing sometime. I mean, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen Kayla dance. I've danced with Kayla. We've been right. together and it's, it's, it's terribly moving. It, it's beautiful. I found my split sole shoes the other day. And they do. <laughs> I started walking around and I'm just, I'm getting them ready. I got work to do. Good. <laughs> well, Ingrid, um, I've got to let you go for tonight, but I'm, we're going to do more of these. I think there's more that you absolutely do more that we need to, to teach, which is, mm -hmm. it's been the bulk of, of what mm -hmm. I've been doing with this programming is teaching. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's important and needed and it's what I find I love to do. Yes. All that's right, Ingrid, my family. I love you. You're in my heart. I and love I you too. Please on Kayla for me too. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, you have a good mm -hmm. night. You too. It's on now. Right. Mm -hmm. I met a man. Who jangles and he dares me He wore no shoes With silver hair, ragged shirt, and baggy pants The old